Father, Son, and Holy Amen. Twenty-four Sundays ago was the day of Pentecost. You can count the math of Sundays. It was twenty-four Sundays ago, and yet today is not the twenty-fourth Sunday after Pentecost. The twenty-fourth Sunday after Pentecost is always the last Sunday. It is the day of judgment. We do not know when the 24th will be. This is why in some years, in the Pentecost season, there are 23 Sundays, and the last Sunday is called the 24th and last Sunday of the Pentecost. Other years, there are 28 Sundays, and the last day that Sunday is called the 24th and last Sunday of the Pentecost. If you count the Sundays from now all the way back to Pentecost, you will discover that there are 24 of them. Well, this is not the 24th. When is the 24th Sunday? It is the day of judgment. It is always 24 because on this day is when the 24 judges have finally got themselves arranged on either side of our Lord Jesus Christ. The four and twenty agents shall be seated in judgment on either side of our Lord Jesus Christ, and they shall judge the world. Now there are 24 Sundays in your life. There are 24 Sundays in my life. 24 Sundays in the life of our country, in the United States. There are 24 Sundays in the life of the world, in the life of the church. There will never be 23, and there will never be 25. But our Lord Jesus Christ said, You know not the day or the hour of my judgment. He did not say that it is not known. For it is given to the Son of Man to know, and he knows. And it is a precise day. 4,004 years after Adam committed his most grave sin and ate the forbidden fruit, on the 25th of December, our Lord Jesus Christ came forth from the womb of his mother in Bethlehem. Thirty-three years later, on March the 15th, on Friday, he was crucified on the cross. Exactly at 3 p.m. he died. And it was over the skull of Adam, where Adam was buried almost 3,000 years earlier. And so, it matters the place, it matters the time. And our Lord Jesus Christ himself also said, the numbers of your hairs are counted. Even that matters. And remember, if our Lord Jesus Christ forgets the number of our hair, then we go bald. This is what happens when he forgets. Is it the 24th Sunday of our country? Is it the 24th Sunday of our church in its present stage? Is it the 24th Sunday of our life? Do the math. And the math is correct. It has been 24 Sundays. 24 Sundays ago, it was Pentecost. 24 Sundays ago, we received grace. And now it is time for the judgment and the wrath of God. But when precisely is he going to come with his judgment and his wrath? Today, a few considerations on the judgment and the wrath of God. We begin to read in the Holy Bravery today, one of the great minor prophets, Osi. And Osi was told by God, he said, Osi, I want you to marry a woman of fornications, because I am angry with Israel, and Israel has committed adultery, and she is an adulteress. And she has gone after fornications, for she has found false lovers, and she has forgotten her true love, and she has abandoned her husband. Therefore he commanded Uzi the prophet to go out and marry a woman of fornications. He went out and he found one, and he married her. And we read about that today in the sacred scripture lesson of the Holy Breviary. Osi, by the command of God, married a woman of fornications. And then he had a child, and a boy was born. 
God said to Ozi, you shall call this child Jezrahil, or there will be blood. And he called the child, there will be blood. For I married the kingdom of Israel, and she has gone off after false lovers. And so your wife has also continued her evil life, and she has gone after false lovers. Therefore I shall call the child, there will be blood. Because she has gone off after false lovers, there will be blood. And so there was blood. A little while later she conceived again. This time she had a daughter. And God came to Osi and said, You shall call this girl without mercy, for I will not have mercy upon my people Israel. And here we consider the beginning of the wrath of God. Does God get angry? Oh, yes, he does. And it is the most terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. First of all, there will be blood. And secondly, there shall not be mercy. And then she conceived and bore a third child. And God was extremely angry. And he came to Osi and he said, You shall call this child not my people. For they are no longer my chosen people. They are no longer my wife. It is no longer my people. I will cast them forth and they shall be remembered no more. They shall always be forgotten. So three signs of the anger of God. The first is that there will be blood. Remember that when Adam committed his sin, there was no death for human beings. There was no sorrow meant to be in our lives. We were not meant to know sorrow. We were not meant to know death. But what happened? Adam decided to commit the great sin of pride, and he ate the forbidden fruit, and he disobeyed God by the best of his woman. And therefore, blood enters the world. And the very first death that came was by means of blood, for it was the jealousy and anger and violence of a priest that brought death into the world. Remember that Cain was a priest, and Abel was a priest. Who is responsible for bringing blood into the world? It is firstly the priest. He is the first one responsible. Adam, the priest, Eve encouraged him to sin, but he chose to do so. Cain did not offer worthy sacrifice to God, and then he turned to blood. He turned to anger. He turned to hatred, and blood brought and came into the world, and there will be blood. And why is there blood? Because Adam turned away from God. God told Adam, you have turned away from me. There shall be blood, for death shall enter the world, and every one of your children, they are going to die. And you show you were made to work, I told you to work, and you did work, and how easy it was. To name the animals, how easy it is to take care of the garden, but I will raise up thorns and thistles. I will make the plants disobey you. I will make the weeds enter into your gardens. I will make the animals afraid of you. I will make the woman disobey you. I will make the children rebel against you, and then you shall die. This is what I have in mind for you, Adam. There will be blood. And then secondly, no mercy. Without mercy, the second punishment of God. Because even though there is blood, and even though God has sent us chastisement, and even though because of chastisement we're supposed to return to God. A few years ago in the great tsunami, 2015 or 16 or 17, whichever year it was, the largest tsunami in the, recorded in the last 400 years, over 400 mile an hour winds going to the Philippines, killing thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Some of our parishioners died. Went over to the Philippines a week after that. The news media reported as many as 5,000 may have died. There were many more dead bodies. So many more died. And it was there a week afterwards, in the Catholic country of the Philippines. Trees ripped out, the port destroyed, the city of Tacloban emaciated. And there was no repentance. There was no sorrow. There was no return to God. 
The priest said it was caused by global warming. And the people said that this is an opportunity to get money, while their brothers and their sisters and their mothers and their families are lying dead and they are going after their bodies. What did they say? We can get lots of money now from the West. This is a golden opportunity to get cash. There was blood, but there was no repentance. God sends chastisement that we might be sorry. Therefore, the second punishment comes. The girl is born, and she is called without mercy. And God says, she will not have mercy, because even though I sent them chastisement that they might return to me, I sent them sorrows that they might remember from whence came all their gifts, they have not returned. And then he said, they are not my people. And this is the most serious punishment of all. For God becomes so angry, so distraught, that he says, they are not my people. This is the anger of God. So beginneth the book of Ossie. Now we continue this holy book. And what happens? God says, now I will turn against the wife. For I have given her love. I have given her these children. And she has continued to follow her lovers. Now this is the example given in sacred scripture whenever Holy Mother of the Church. Why are we being punished as a people in the United States? Why are we being punished by the errors and heresies of Vatican II? Why are we being punished by our families being ripped apart? Because we have found other lovers than God. That's the reason. We have chosen to love money more than God. We have chosen to love our bank accounts. We've chosen to love our comfort. We've chosen to love those lovers who will give us these things. Capitalism is so much better than Catholicism. Capitalism is the answer. Freedom to continue our life of sin is the answer. And we're going to go after the false lovers. So we continue the book of O.C. Here is what the Holy Ghost says. And I will not have mercy upon her, that is the bride. And I will not mercy upon her children, where there are the children of fornications. For their mother hath committed fornication. She that conceived them is covered with shame. For she said, I will go after my lovers, that give me my bread, and my water, and my wool, and my flax, and my oil, and my drink. Wherefore, behold, I will hedge up my, thy way with thorns, and I will stop it up with a wall, and she shall not find her paths. Is this the moment of the church today? I want my life back. I don't want my bank accounts to be shut down. I don't want to lose my freedoms. I don't want to lose my house. I'm going to seek after my lovers. When we walked, and I was not able to walk physically yesterday in the, in the, in the walk with the seminarians who had to go to do a wedding. In fact, this was a, the, the, uh, to do a marriage, but it was here in prayer and in spirit. Yesterday, and the seminarians were here walking. But and saying the rosary for our country. Okay, so I left yesterday this morning at 4 o'clock, came back last night at midnight in order to go do the wedding and come back. But get back to here. But we're here to pray for our holy our country to come to God. What is going to happen next, according to the Holy Ghost? I will not have mercy upon our children for their children of fornications. They're going to go after their lovers. Wherefore I will put a hedge above them by way of thorns. And she shall follow after her lovers, and she shall not overtake them, and she shall seek them, and she shall not find. And she shall say, I will go and return to my first husband, because it's better for me then than now. And after all these things, she goes after the false lovers, and she recognizes, I have had confidence in capitalism. I have had confidence in democracy. I have had confidence in my senators. I have had confidence in what the world has to offer me. I have confidence in America. And I have chased after all these things. And it hasn't worked. Therefore, I shall return to my first husband. And here the woman, the most wicked woman of fornications, she begins to think like a prodigal son. She has gone out after all the lovers. Even when she was with her husband, she continued to commit fornications and adulteries. She continued to seek out her other lovers. She did not remain faithful. 
Because they were the ones that gave her bread. They were the ones that gave her oil. They were the ones that gave her all the things she had. And she sought after her lovers. But then she says in her heart, the beginning of her conversion, I will go back to my husband because it was better then with my husband than it is now with all these wicked lovers. Here, remember what the Holy Ghost says. Sin is its own punishment. Let's take the easiest example of drunkenness. A drunk likes drink. Really great stuff. What happens after he drinks it? His health goes away. His friends go away. He is filled with despair and misery, and he ascends to an early death, and he lives a miserable, miserable life, and the more he drinks, the more miserable he is. Already now in multiple cases of young drunk men and drunk women. Only at the moment when they were all ready to die. And the doctor said, you should not be alive. Your body is finished. And then when they realize that they are dead and that another drink will kill them, then they say, now I'll return to my first lover. I will return to my husband. This is the call that our Lord Jesus Christ is making to Western man right now. This is the call that he's making to all Catholics. The call that he's making to all Americans. Who is your first lover? Who is your husband? And remember also, and we'll read later on in verse 16, our Lord does not want to be our master. He does not like to be seen as the master. But he continues, but rather he is the husband. I will return to my husband. And she did not know that I gave her corn and wine, and I gave her oil, and multiplied her silver and gold, which they have used in the service of Baal. Where did all the prosperity of America come from? It didn't come from the founding fathers. who are now burning in a place called hell, unless they repented of their masonry and their wicked lives, which maybe some of them did. The glory of the wealth of America, the goodness that is in this land, from the most beautiful valleys and hills and mountains, they come from God. And what about our prosperity? What about our corn? What about our oil? What about our buildings? What about our economics? What does all the good of our housing come from? It comes from God. And here the Holy Ghost says, but she did not know. I was the one that gave her the corn, not those wicked lovers. I was the one that gave her the oil. I was the one that gave her the wax. And she used all of it in the service of Baal, Beelzebub, the prince of devils, the lord of the flies, Satan. She used them all in the service of Baal, even though all of our good things come only from God. Where does my health come from? It doesn't come from vitamins and essential oils. It comes from God. And where do the vitamins and essential oils come from, by the way? They come from God. Why is it that we have anything good? It is only from God. And we are to be too reminded. Our Lord Jesus Christ told us to say a prayer. And it is an infallible prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Give us this day our daily bread. Does anyone else give us daily bread? One day, Daniel had no daily bread. And he was surrounded by lions and locked in a, in a cavern with them. And God brought Habakkuk to bring him his daily bread. Our ancestors in this flesh, we are the Jews of the spirit, and they were the Jews of the flesh. And the Jews of the flesh wandered 40 years in the desert. And what did they receive? Daily bread, the daily manna, and our daily food comes from God. But we don't know it. So we continue up the prophet Osi. And she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and oil and a multitude of her silver, and multiplied her silver and multiplied her gold. That's where our money comes from. God must make it work. Which they have used in the service of Baal. Therefore will I return and take away my corn in its season, and my wine in its season. I will set liberty my wool and my flax with covered, which covered her in disgrace. Now will I lay open her folly in the eyes of her lovers, 
and no man to deliver her out of my hand. And these words are spoken of our Holy Mother of the Church, as they are spoken of the Jews in the Old Testament. Where is the strength of the bishops? Where is the strength of our holy bishop in Rome, Pope Francis? Where is the strength of the priests? Where are they? They are not doing the work of God. They are not preaching the Holy Gospel. They do not tell souls that all things come from God. And God said into the first day, what he did was good. And all the food that was created on the third day, and on the fifth day, and on the sixth day, he saw it, it was good. And all things that come to us come from God, and he is good. And all things he did are good, and there is no good that does not come from God. One of the beautiful elements of our English language is that the word God is G-O-O-D. And somehow the second O got dropped over time. And the word good is everything that comes from God. So for our language, God and good, good and God, there's no difference. We know that all that is good is God and from God. And all that is good leads to God. And outside of God, there is no good. Now we have forgotten this. And so therefore there has come a punishment. And there has come pain. I will destroy her vines and her fig trees. Of which she said, these are my rewards. Which my lovers have given to me. She believes her lovers gave it to her. And she did not know that it came from God. Let your lovers give you health. Let your lovers give you food. Whenever you give yourselves over to communism, what is happening right now in America? Joe Biden, all he is, is a communist dictator. That's all. That's all he is. All he brings is communism to America. That's all. Communism has been in America for a very long time. Just that now it shows itself in a more visible way. And what is the problem of communism? It is the problem of souls not loving the Blessed Virgin Mary and souls not being consecrated to her Immaculate Heart. It is the problem of souls not saying the Holy Rosary and praying it with their hearts. It is the problem of souls not having faith. That's the reason why Russia has spread its errors throughout the United States, throughout the Holy Roman Catholic Church, throughout the Society of St. Pius X, Throughout all of the organizations in the world, the devil is spreading its communism. The errors of Russia are being spread everywhere. As Our Lady said that they would be spread. Because we don't love God. We don't love Him as our husband. Holy Mother Church is called the Bride of Christ. And what is the most terrible thing that a bride can do? Give her love for someone else. Find another love. This is the worst thing a bride can do. And the bride, we are members of that bride. And every time we go after another love than Jesus Christ, another love than His holy faith, another place to find security, then we are committing adultery and we are committing fornication. As sacred scripture says so many times. And then the book of Osi continues. And I will visit her upon the I will visit on her days of Balaam, to whom she poured incense and decked herself out with earrings and with her jewels, and went to and went to after her lovers and forgot me, said the Lord. So what is happening right now? And I will allure her. What does a lover do? What has happened? Jesus Christ, who is our husband, he must act as though he is a lover, and he must allure her away from her false lovers. And bring her out into the wilderness and into the desert. And here we refer to the book of Apocalypse, chapters 11 and 12. The next section of the book of Osi here, chapter 2. Therefore, behold, I will allure her, and I will lead her into the wilderness, and I will speak to her heart. This is what Christ is trying to do right now. He is trying to speak to the heart of those Catholics. And remember that all the pagans in the world today, their ancestors were once Catholics. Adam is the father of us all. And Noah is the father of us all. And Noah had the true Roman Catholic faith. He was of the true religion. And what happened? His children walked away from that religion. And all those of the Western countries, all of our ancestors were all Catholic. 
We have found other lovers, Protestant lovers, all the different kinds of Protestant lovers that are out there, to find something other than Christ who would justify the sins of fornication and adultery. The Protestant religion was founded simply to justify lust and greed. That's all. Prosperity gospel, change your woman. That's the foundation of Protestantism. They have found other lovers. And all the pagans found other lovers. They go to the false gods to give them lust and to give them greed. They have found other lovers. But they were supposed to be of the true religion. And all were founded in the true religion. And now there is a wilderness throughout the entire world. And God is allowing us to be allured out into the wilderness. It's an uncertain future. It's so uncertain. We are in a wilderness. Therefore, listen to our Lord Jesus Christ. For he speaks to the heart. And I will speak to her heart. And I will give her vine dressers out of the same place. And the valley of Aquar for an opening of hope. And she shall sing there according to the days of her youth. And according to the days of her coming up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be in that day, saith the Lord, that she shall call me my husband. And she shall no longer say any more, Bali, my master. He is waiting. Many people go to church because that's the rules. Remember the elder son. St. Augustine talks about the elder son. He was also a prodigal. The prodigal son went off with harlots, spent himself in riotous living. But the elder son did not. But St. Augustine says, notice the first time the word harlot is mentioned in the Gospel of St. Luke chapter 15. It's not mentioned by the Holy Ghost. What it says is, the prodigal son went and spent himself and riot his living. We know that means he went into be a party on. But the older son says, he spent himself in harlots, and he never had a harlot. He never committed to sin, but he wanted to. He was not sorry in his heart. Therefore, he also had to be repentant. He wanted to go, he wanted, he had to, he also had to repent. And therefore, he says, now, she'll, now that she shall call me my husband, and she shall not call me anymore my master. In Hebrew, this word, my husband and my husband. One husband is a husband that the wife loves. The other husband is a husband that the wife is afraid of because he is a cruel taskmaster. Our Lord wants us to understand that He wants our love, and He is alluring us into the desert to capture back our love. This is why He walked the way of the cross. He carried that cross on such a terrible journey. He allowed Himself to be scourged and crowned with thorns. He allowed Himself to be visited by all our agony that He might attract our love. This is what He's after. We must understand in our present battle of the faith, it is not a battle of the true ideas versus the bad ideas. This is not a battle of brains. It is a battle of the truth inside of heart versus lie inside of heart. For many people that have lies in their hearts have truth in their brain, but they are the followers of the father of lies. We must not be the follower of the followers of lies. We must not have lie in our heart. Therefore, Lord Jesus Christ says, Let him call, let her call her, call my husband. And then what happens? And I will give her vine dressers, and I will take away the names of Balaam out of her mouth, and she should no more remember their name. This is the next stage in the history of our holy church. And all the wicked Catholics, they shall no longer remember the name of Baal. It is Baal that is Hollywood. It is Baal that is Moscow. It is Baal that is the swamp of Washington, D.C. By the way, it was built on a swamp 300 years ago, and it's still a swamp today and always has been. And so the Baal is whom they worship in all these places of bank, of the banksters that run the world, in all the places and parliaments of governments. But Baal shall be forgotten and taken out of our mouth. The day that we can say to our Lord Jesus Christ as members of the Bride of Christ, my husband. The wife loves her husband. The wife obeys her husband because of love. 
The wife would never want to see harm come to her beloved. The wife is interested only in what he wants and what he desires. And the wife makes his home a most wonderful and happy place because it is filled with her love. And Holy Mother Church is supposed to be filled with the love of the saints. And we are supposed to be saints. Be ye perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. We are supposed to be saints. We are supposed to have the love of God in our hearts, manifested in our lives and our actions and our entire being. That's what's supposed to be inside of us. And that is the reason why our Lord allows chastisement. And he says angry words, there will be blood. The girl without mercy and not my people. But then what happens? And I will espouse thee to me forever. And in that day I will make a covenant with them, with the beasts of the field, with the fowls of the air, with the creeping things of the earth. And I will destroy the bow, and I will destroy the sword, and war out of the land. And I will make them sleep secure. And I will espouse thee to me forever. And I will espouse thee to me in justice, and judgment, and in mercy, and in commiserations. And I will espouse thee to me in faith. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord. And it shall come to pass in that day, I will hear, said the Lord, I will hear the heavens, and they shall hear the earth. And the earth shall hear the corn, and the wine, and the oil. And thee shall hear Jezreel, which is without there will be blood. And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy on her that was without mercy. And I will save that people, which was not my people, that thou art my people, and they shall say, thou art my God. This is all that the Lord is after. What is this anger of Christ? St. Augustine talked about it. He so knew Jesus Christ so very well. He said, consider the Holy Gospel. When the Lord Jesus Christ was angry one day, and he said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. And you know what St. Augustine says about that passage? You see how gentle our Lord is? When you say Satan, it doesn't sound very gentle. But how did he speak it? You remember Father Hannah, my old pastor. Father, can I borrow some five bucks? Here, turn off the lights. Lights cost money. Don't bother me. Can I have some more money? All right. Crap. When he was angry, it didn't sound like anger to me. The Lord Jesus Christ says, Get behind me, Satan. And there was a very wise priest of the Old Testament. Very wise. Jonas. And Jonas said to God, You say you're going to destroy the city of Nineveh. That's what you say. You say you're going to kill them all. And they're all going to go to hell. But I know you, God. You're lying. You're not telling the truth. You say you're going to punish them, and I'm going to go tell them they're going to be punished, and then you're going to change your mind. No, go and tell them. What happens? He changed his mind. Does God change his mind? No, he never does. God is always the same. What is his wrath? It is the expression of his infinite love. It is the guidance of his infinite wisdom. When you have a child run on the streets, and there comes a Big Mac truck, you scream at the child, Stop! You sound very angry. Maybe the child stops because of your anger. But what made that anger? What made you cry out, Stop? It is only love. If he's a little satanic brat, he runs out on the streets, no, 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 do something else. Oh, darn, yeah, run over. But, if there is love, anger floweth forth from the heart. Anger is one of the signs of love. And the wrath of our Lord Jesus Christ, it is an expression of his love. And he says, get behind me, Satan. Now notice this as St. Augustine. These are most terrible words. He did not say it the first day he met uh, Peter, because Simon would have broken his heart. He wouldn't understand. But it was already a year later. And he said, get behind me, Satan. And what did that mean? Oh, our Lord is angry. I'll try to change my ways. But he did not fear Christ. And he stayed close to him. And he never questioned his love. How did he say those words, says St. Augustine? Now consider these words. You will have three children, you wicked woman. The word first shall be called 
that Jezrael, which means there will be blood. The second shall be called without mercy, and the third shall be called not my people, and then I shall cast you forth and say that thou art no longer my wife. But what happens? He still provides for her, even in her wickedness, for it raineth upon the just and the unjust alike. We are not the only ones that receive the rain that gives us life. Also, the enemies of God receive rain to give them life. They are held the same care of as well of ours. And why is this? That they might be given the grace to return to God. And they that were called, not my people, they shall be my people. And all he wants to say is, for they shall be my people. And they shall say, thou art my God. God is God, whether you believe he's God or not. Jesus Christ is God, whether you believe he's God or not. He's king, whether you like it or not. But he wants us to say, Thou art my king. Thou art my Christ. Thou art my God. And I am your son. And I am your spouse. And live inside of your heart. And have complete confidence in our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we are given a difficult time. And we go to weep and we go to pray. But let these tears be the tears for our sins. And the tears for our choosing another lover than the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to change our loves and change our lover. It is not enough that our brain hold that which is true. It must be true in our hearts. And so let us make sure the truth is in our hearts and that we don't go after false lovers. And we pray for a reprieve for our country. We do deserve a great punishment. We do deserve to be destroyed. We have earned it by our sins. But we ask in heaven, hear the prayers of a few souls, especially the widows and the orphans. Hear the prayers of a few souls and innocent children and sinners that are truly sorry for their terrible sins. These prayers cry to heaven. We deserve a great punishment. We pray for a reprieve. We pray for a reprieve. Though Mr. Trump, who is truly elected to president, he has won the election, but it doesn't matter, no one cares. But the fact is that he must turn to God. He cannot have confidence in the judges, they are criminals. He can't have confidence in America, that's a waste of time. The confidence must be in our Lord and our Lady. The confidence must be in Christ. And this is what's needed for the salvation of our land. Because we want every man in this country and every woman and child in this country to know, love, and serve God in this world so that they might be happy with Him in the next. To know, love, and serve God in their individual life, in their family life, in their life of work, in their life of play, and in their social life and political life. Let them know, love, and serve God in this world that they might be happy with Him in the next. And they will be able to receive a hundredfold happiness here below. Followed by eternal happiness in heaven. And if we don't have that, knowing, loving, and serving God in His true holy church with the love of His holy mother and the love of the saints, and that He is our husband, He's our father. A father is one whom we love with all our hearts and whom He knows He only wants good for us. A husband is one we love with all our hearts. Not master, not body, but God and King. Father and husband. Let him be the father and husband in our hearts. And this is the way to change the world and bring about very quickly, as quickly as possible, the victory of the Holy Mother so that she will finally move the heart of the Pope to consecrate Russia and Macarthur and Mary in the union with all the bishops throughout the world. And then shall come a great and sudden victory. But this victory depends upon us having a love of Jesus Christ as a husband bride, the church to which we belong. And the Father is our Father. And the Holy Ghost is the only life that breathes inside of us. All with the spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and the daughter of the Father, and the mother of the Son, and the spouse of the Holy Ghost. And with this we have a happy life, followed by a happy eternity. But remember, it is a battle of loves that's going on right now. And let us make sure the love of faith dominates in our hearts. This is the only way to conquer Satan. Blessing of you all, in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost.